Yo, yo, yo! Welcome to another exciting episode of your favorite Enviro Show. Indeed, very, very much interesting. And it's always a pleasure to have you right there. Yeah, so shout out to our day ones. You know who you are, man. Shout out Nakwila, I saw you. Shout out Miss Ruth. Shout out to our Tamanzi youth and our Congo youth out there. Yeah, so stay tuned, guys, because you know next week we will be giving shout outs again. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're commenting and we're, we're checking you out, man. Yeah, so get yourself comfortable and stay tuned. Youth Enviro Show. This is Luciano and Yeke Youth Enviro Show. This is Martha, you're watching Youth Enviro Show. Stay tuned. Do you believe that, you know, Namibians are doing much to combat climate change? I mean, in our homes, we hardly practice the three R's. Children are taught about reuse, reduce, recycle in schools mostly. But in our homes, we don't even have systems where we recycle. We don't even have systems of what do we do with our cans, yeah. you know? And I know that there's so many organizations and institutions who on a weekly basis do the rounds in terms of educating people. Even the red plastic bag that we get from rent a drum Yeah. I mean, they're like it says, it's like so much information on that bag. But our people toss it. They just put it in the garbage bin. I think that there's just a lot more we can do. Uh -huh. We're not doing enough to continue protecting our planet. Someday I would like my children's children to be able to see a rhino. Welcome back. In our previous episodes, we have been caucusing so much about climate change. So today we are going to dive in more and more about something very interesting. Oh, I find this like the most interesting topic that we've had so far. Mm, and this is the reason why we do not want you to go away because we'll be speaking a lot about interesting topics mm -hmm. that can actually help you. However, now in this one here, right here, we are going to teach you or educate you about speciation and extinction. So Sharessa, before our viewers start commenting, yeah. what is species? Well, I hope most of you remember from biology, mm -hmm. some of you that are still in high school, um, we know that a species is a group of organisms, similar organisms that are able to interbreed. So we know that plants, they're a certain type of species, animals are a certain type of species, and us, we're also a certain type of species. Now, I want to find out from you, what is our species name? What do they call us? If you have the question, I mean the answer to this question, please comment down below. Moving on, let's define what speciation is. So speciation is how a new kind of plant or animal species is created. Speciation occurs when a group within a species separates from other members of its species and develops its own unique characteristic. The demand of different food that are actually being found in a certain environment mm. and the characteristic is what actually differentiates this species from the ancestors. Yeah. For example, the Galapagos finch. These birds actually live in different islands of Archipelago Galapagos Island. So what happened is that these birds, before they isolated from one another, mm -hmm. like this species, it was actually due to the fact that a physical barrier, like mm -hmm. an ocean, 
came in that island. Now it divided islands into different islands, smaller islands, causing these species of birds to live in each island. Yeah. So now what happened is that in each island is actually different. The environment there is different. Mm. The food there is different. So the, and this is the reason why each species of these birds in different islands Happy. they have developed or they have evolved new characteristic that could only fit yeah. for that certain environment for example the ones that live in one island where there's hard shells oh, yeah. of nuts so they are beaks they have developed into a little bit harder and mm. shorter beaks to be able to crack the net the mm -hmm. nuts and even the skills and what they how they use and develop mm -hmm. what they what they used to do all together in the mainland mm -hmm. now they have to find a new way of doing you know in this new island and this is now what we call speciation because now they can no more in the bridge oh yes because of the physical barrier, barrier which is the ocean and you know the name for that is called the allopatric speciation mm -hmm. which means that it can only happen because the species are being divided by a physical barrier which is either the ocean a river or the mountain very interesting eh? yeah let's talk about now the peripatric speciation mm -hmm. this is when an individual of these species for example let me, let's talk about the birds yeah ne? a group of organisms in this group they have actually separated as mm -hmm. well uh, by a physical barrier as you have mentioned an ocean or a mountain however the difference between allopatric and peripatric is that now in in peripatric is a small number oh, yeah. that is actually separated from the large number of the same species mm. now and then they also have to be different they have to to evolve however they still cannot interbreed mm. because of the physical barrier remember we are talking about creation of a new species which is actually different from the ancestors mm -hmm. now this is actually bringing us to now the parapatric speciation when this speciation occurs in a mining area and you know mining area actually produces or let me say the mine in that area produces harmful gases yeah harmful uh, metals toxin. Mm, toxin a lot of toxin mm -hmm. so for example a buffalo grass ne? guys it is grass that has been named after the animal not the animal eating the grass because that's what i thought <laughs> so this grass it's actually it evolves ne, in such a way that it has to develop mechanism to be able to to obtain food mm -hmm. as well as obtain water like yeah, through nutrients. absorption nutrients in a polluted environment so it can also develop like enzymes that can able to you know to catalyze certain uh -huh. metals however the buffalo grass in the mining area will not be the same as the one which is not in a non-polluted area and mm. this is where speciation occurs because these two species are now different due to the environment well and this brought us to the last speciation which is artificial speciation artificial speciation is normally done in the lab this is when you see people are creating new species in the lab mm -hmm. using for example experiment using you know look at some dogs they were created from the lab that is true look at some you know and it will even continue happening more and more as the world is developing yes. because you know we're looking for new ways technology is developing in such a fast pace that we're looking for new ways of our mundane structures mm. food is very very important uh, when it comes to food productivity you know a lot of things has to be done so that you can be able to feed all the people yeah. so why don't you give us an example of a type of speciation that we have actually not spoken about this could also be artificial or it can be allopatric mm -hmm. or sympatric or peripatric or parapatric so comment down below
Today we took a very interesting tour. We came to the natural science department of the museum. Can you believe it? We actually have a department, a part of our museum, that deals with all interesting species. Mammals, fishes, reptiles. I am blown away and so you will be as well. So come on, let's go along as we go through these different departments. This is entomology. Here, as you can see, this is my workstation. This mm. whole whole building is where we keep all the varieties of insects. Wow! So this is one. Uh, this is the biggest collection you find at the museum mm -hmm. right now, and one of the biggest uh, entomology collections in Africa. Wow! Did you hear that? One of the biggest insect collections in Africa. Uh, so at, uh, at the museum we do curation work where we do the collection of, of uh, biological specimens, we do the pinning them, we preserve them, we do research on them, like studying them, what are they, uh, mm, speciation, how are they extinct or mm -hmm. something like that, so that we find out through the um, uh, geographical uh, distribution mm. like we want to know what was what is in the southern part of Namibia what is in the northern part of Namibia is it still the same does it still ah. exist then and, and or is it gone like right now we don't see butterflies anymore according to many factors uh, and I mean everybody have observed yeah you, that is you true. hardly see uh, butterflies those as beautiful much. butterflies and more might be because of climate change or because of other uh, changes that happen mm. in the nature. Uh, so this collection is divided into two, in the dry collection and in the wet collection. The dry collection make up the large portion of the collection. As you can see, these uh, big specimens that, are, that can be pinned and can be uh, kept in this form the same way as they are in the nature. So they, uh, they are a dry collection while that one in the bottle mostly is those tiniest uh, specimens that we get that we are unable to pin so we preserve them like that in 75% ethanol. Oh. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kunan Jambi Mupura. Welcome to the Birds and the Small Mammal Collection. Oh, nice. We have over 256 specimens here. So this is basically an inactive collection, right? There's no more collections or specimens being collected. Ah. It's mainly just for maintenance purpose. Mm. Okay, so we have two collections, which is the wet and dry. The wet collection um, consists of specimens being placed in ethanol. And the dry collection consists of the skulls, the skin, and specimen um, such as this being oh. treated with um, borax, it's a type of salt that is being placed on the specimen. Oh. And then some cotton is inserted into the, um, into the specimen. And uh, yeah. Sewn together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't want to touch any of these. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is basically for research purpose and mm. for conservation purpose, so for the future generations to see. Um, I'm already a future generation. This were collected right in the 1920s. 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 Um, so maybe we can start with the. Uh, oh, these are big birds. These are big birds. Um, that one looks familiar. That is a vulture. These are vultures. So this tag um, is called a meta tag. A tag. Um, it shows who collected it, mm. when it was collected, where it was collected, and sometimes it also has a GPS, a GPS coordinate. Mm. So this was collected in the 1965. So this is how big the vultures were back in the 1965. I don't know how is it the same size or due to climate change we might not expect the same size. Is it? Vultures. But then you guys won't be collecting anymore. We won't be collecting. So anymore then you can't really. There is a need ah. for comparison or for study sake. Mm. Um, before the team goes out into the field, we acquire a permit from the Ministry of Environment and Tourism. Um, they are the ones that, that give us the permit, so we need to have a, a certain 
number of species ah. that we collect also. So we cannot just go out there and just collect whatever we want to collect. Exactly, because yeah. nature still needs them. Yes. So this is also a duck, a family of the duck. I don't know when this was collected. Um, let me see. 1964. 1964. Yeah. So right here we have some true eagles. So I don't know if you are comfortable with touching um, this burex. Uh, without gloves? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, this um, were treated with burex, the type of salt that I said. Mm -hmm. So it kind, kind of keeps it in this most natural state. Imagine if I say this were collected in the 1920s. Oh. And look at how oh. wild they are. They're very soft yeah, actually. Very soft. So they place a certain cotton in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. So it's just all for preservation sake. Um, for the lovebirds. No, oh, lovebirds. So we also preserve these little birds also here in its most natural state also. Guys, so so this is from the 1972, I think. This is when this was collected. Oh, okay, yeah, I can yeah. see these are all the same breed. Yeah, all the same bird. So each draw would have a certain, a certain um, family mm. from here, you see? Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, this is no, it's okay. Mammals. This is the African wildcat. Mm. I'll stand said. right here by you. Yes. So this is part of the dry collection. It's treated with burex, and this is the small, small spotted cats. I haven't seen this one around. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure they're around. It's just. Oh, are they? In, these are in the wild. They are all in the wild. Yes. These are the hair collection also. Mm. Yeah, so they also just preserve the same. So hares and rabbits are different. They're different, different families. But they're able to crossbreed. They should be from the fam the same family in mm -hmm. order to, to crossbreed. Oh, yeah, they so should be the same same family in order for them to crossbreed. Mm. Yeah. Okay, get that now. Zebra and lion skin. What? You know this might be the closest I'm gonna get to a lion. <laughs> so, wow. This was also treated with uh, burex, the, the salt that I was telling you about. Yeah, I can feel that these are pretty hard, but that is what happens to yeah. the skin, right? After a few years. So this is what a zebra feels like. Mm -hmm. hmm. So right here we have the pintolini, which is one of the indigenous species in Namibia. They are quite hunted, they're in demand, um, so that's why they are well protected by the Ministry of Environment and Tourism. So everybody, anybody who's found with it is actually fined. Um, some, we have some stream balls, water, so as we said, this is just the skin collection. And right here we have the jackals. So this is just all the skin that I've tried and treated with burex. These shells are actually pretty hard, hey? But maybe because they've been preserved after some time, they do feel a bit fragile. My name is Sisamo Baepi. I am the curator for the Ethiology and the Aquatic Invertebrates Collection. So the aim of, our, of the collection is to collect and preserve all fish species and aquatic invertebrates across the country. Mm. Like for the fish collection, we, we collect mostly from the rivers, the dams and the lakes, and the marine environment, which is our sea. Mm. So in the archaeology collection, we have, two, but we have two sections. We have the freshwater fish, we have the marine fish. So our freshwater fish comprises of fish that we get from freshwater, and our marine comprises of the sea. So in our freshwater, in our freshwater collection, we have uh, a variety of species that we have uh, from, that we have collected from rivers, from lakes, and dams across the country. We also have uh, uh, specimens that uh, were given to the museum with donation from other countries like Angola, Germany, mm. that we yes. And our marine just mostly comprises from the, 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 the ocean. So how do, we, uh, how do we get access to this or how do we collect? We usually have trips or field trips where we go on surveys, long surveys where we collect across all the, all the, all the, across the country. Mm. And we, we also get specimens from uh, researchers. Usually when researchers come to Namibia, they are doing their research for their studies, postgraduate studies. So they usually deposit the specimens here at the museum. So that's where we curate them and preserve them. So they don't usually only uh, if they have, they have specimens that they have to go with 
to, to, to their countries or respective institutions that's where they have to loan them from the museum uh -huh. so when they collect the specimens they belong to the museum they have to be deposited to the museum so this is catfish this is the common catfish that we have clarius carapinos so i collected this uh, last of last week in the quiseb oh, river God. pass yeah in the quiseb river pass so these are just juveniles when they are small they can get bigger bigger than all of us like the yeah they can get so long and big oh, oh definitely yeah. my height <laughs> and, no even <laughs> even taller than yeah, me taller. okay so this is how we display them we display them in uh, jars mm. so these are console jars and this is seven this is 70 percent ethanol that they are preserved in so these are just the lab labels to help with the identification the name of the species so the family oh yes yes that's, that's nice. alas the day so this is the family that includes this uh tiger fish mm. the family of tiger fish yes so these are all as the same 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 family and then we have the chichilids chichilids this is the in the clothes the tilapias the the large mouth fish any fish that you see that looks like you know tilapia how it looks like mm. tilapia that's a, like this type of fish oh they look so nice yeah so any fish that you see or come across that looks like this and this fresh water that belongs to this family of chich chichin days Oh guys, mm. what an experience that was. It was exciting. It was honestly, it was amazing. So make some time throughout the week. I know for those who are working, it's a bit difficult because they only open throughout the week, but it's honestly, it's so amazing. And it's right across our big national museum. Did you enjoy it? Oh, I, I loved it. What an experience. Now, let's fast forward to extinction. So, Sharissa, what is extinction? Well, extinction is the termination mm -hmm. of an organism or a species, mm -hmm. which means basically the death of the organism and species that they no longer exist. So, before we actually dish out what we know and what we have done research about, mm -hmm. explain, tell us what is extinction yeah. and which animal have actually extinct if that if that's a word i mean esther this is esther's favorite bird she yeah. always talks <laughs> about this bird so if you know the name mm. of esther's favorite bird please comment down below and if you don't know you can always go back to episode number two that's what we have spoken about that favorite bird of mine mm -hmm. yeah so guys extinction eh, like she said it's when organisms are no more existing. Mm -hmm. However, we have now different types of extinction. Mm -hmm. We have now the global extinction. And we have local extinction. We have also extinction in the wild. So global extinction is when these species are no more existing at all at all. Mm -hmm. For example, in dinosaurs. Also things like dragons and like the Tatana boa, the biggest snake in the world. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that these things existed? I mean, I feel like the only reason why we believe dinos or dinosaurs were real is because we have physical proof. But yeah. other people also talk about like these other creatures also existed, but now they are extinct. Mm, such as unicorn. Do you really think there was really a mm. unicorn or is it just a fairy tale? Yeah. So you may comment right down below. Moving on to local extinction. Study have shown that some organisms, or let me say some species, are no more found in their range, but only in the wild. For example, the American wolf. Study or researchers have stated that American wolf is no more found in its range, but only in the wild. And also in the wild, the number of individuals of this species has actually deteriorated or decreased. 
We also have a third type of extinction, mm. which is wild extinction. It means that certain organisms and species are no longer found in nature, mm. but the only way that we can see them or that they're being able to be protected is being in zoos, aquariums, or botanical gardens. Speaking of that, we have been speaking so much about the types of extinction. What really causes extinction? Oof, I'm telling you, there's so many reasons, right? Mm -hmm. But if I have to name five, it would have to be catastrophic events such as earthquakes, mm -hmm. um, you know, tsunamis. Then it has to be diseases. There are certain diseases that only happen within species. Mm -hmm. For example, mouth and tongue. Yeah, you know. Disease. For example, uh, you know, horse flu for mm -hmm. horses, bird flu, um, there's events, you know, human activity, mm -hmm. we contribute, I would have to say, largely to the reason of why, you know, a lot of organisms are going extinct, but then also, you know, competition between organisms and predators. Yeah, when she's talking about human activities, which actually the main cause of extinction. Mm -hmm. However, human activi activities did not cause dinosaurs to go to extinct. I mean, that was That's a natural why, cause. Yeah, it, it was <laughs> a natural cause. However, humans are actually a destruction. Us, mm -hmm. me and you. Because when the population of human beings increases, everyone wants to clear the land yeah. and start their own family and when you start your own family you have now a farm you you start building at that place you cut down trees like the habitats mm -hmm. there are actually some birds that only prefer to live at a certain tree or they not even prefer they mm -hmm. actually can only live in a certain tree because it's their protection yeah with nature is very very interesting mm -hmm. because there are certain organisms that only prefer to feed at a certain type of a plant of a tree or feed a certain type of a of a bird mm. or they, they really choose their diet is specific yeah and imagine if we now actually eliminate this diet of then certain animal then it's causing us issues yeah however we are still talking about what causes extinction is like habit destruction mm -hmm. cutting down of poaching trees. yes very very important i mean like we mentioned before you know mm. certain animals they you know their tusks their fur is of good quality they mm. keep us warm or they like good for medicinal purposes but mm. however you know illegal activities with these animals have also gone to arise mm activities such as overfishing mm. is actually decreasing the fish in, in the, the ocean, ocean or in the water body over handing and oil spills however we have been speaking so much about extinction now, mm -hmm. but we didn't mention other interesting species that have actually extinct yeah. species such as dodo bed which actually extinct 1662 stella sea cow 1768 Masarini Island Giant Tortoise 1795 The South African Cape Lion in 1858 The Baji White Dolphin that went extinct in 2006 and the Chinese Paddlefish that went extinct in 2007 Wow, that was recent eh? That is recent, imagine every year actually you know, certain species and organisms are actually going extinct. And that's so sad. But how can we prevent this to happen? How can we prevent extinction? Mm -hmm. You may comment down right below. And you know, mm -hmm. humans depend. We need a healthy ecosystem in order to help us purify mm -hmm. the environment. Okay. Now imagine one ecosystem one species is is removed from the chain yeah what's going to happen yeah for example here in our country we depend so much in our wildlife yeah imagine if we remove all the elephants all the lions all the thai all the cheetahs sorry we don't have tigers in namibia all the crocodiles the hippos the rhinos mm. what will happen to our tourists 
Uh, our GDP is gonna go down. Yeah, and it's always a pleasure to have our tourists actually in the country. I love tourists. Yeah, we love seeing you here. Yes, we love seeing you here. That's why if you are watching us and you are from outside Namibia, you must come visit us here. We have a variety of and plenty of wildlife animals that we are actually trying to prevent from extinction. And I mean, it's so different seeing mm -hmm. it in a zoo than what you actually see it in nature. Yeah, so Sharissa, the question still remains what can me and you do to curb extinction well the most important thing and it will forever be the most important thing yeah. is education mm -hmm. we need to know specifically what type of organisms or species are in our country that is going extinct or around the world. You know, another very important thing that we need to do is to start driving slowly. Mm. Because remember, as humans, we have moved into the habitat mm. of the species and organisms mm. with the developing of our cities. Mm. And now some animals they still live within these developed areas. Mm -hmm. And as you've seen, they do put up road signs saying, slow down, watch mm -hmm. out. The you animals, know, wild, wildlife animals are here. Exactly. The white dogs may just jump in. Mm. The elephants, you know, may just also walk. Mm -hmm. And you see in those things, they, you know, they are very detrimental to us because we end up in accidents. Mm -hmm. But also so many times what happens is that those animals end up dying. And that, you know, is killing off the species. The last extinction prevention measure is by recycling and also by reusing papers. This is because papers are actually from cutting down trees. Mm -hmm. Like if you cut a tree, papers are actually a plant. Yeah. You cut down a plant to get a paper. And if we reduce, we reuse, that means that we'll have fewer trees to cut down. And this brought us to the end of our today's episode. As from me, Esther. And me, Sharissa. Totsin. Bye.